I do believe. So this installment of the Last Day series is called 2020 Vision. And you know, this is kind of a play on what we're supposed to have in the, uh, I guess, the biological sense of our vision. It, it should be the perfect vision is considered 2020 vision, but also it is the year 2020. And so our vision in 2020 should, we should be paying attention and we should be able to see things uh, that are happening, that are occurring and make the changes necessary, make the lifestyle adjustments necessary based on what we are seeing. So we're gonna, uh, you can look this up, adamantbeliever.com forward slash last days five dot PDF. Now the thing about this PDF, I do have live motion videos in this. So when you pull the PDF up, you're not gonna have the live motion videos. So, uh, you know, you'll be able to see those uh, in, the, in this actual video. Um, so we're going to go back to the Olivet Discourse of Jesus speaking to his disciples in Matthew 24. And we're going to start at 24 and 11, where he told them, And many false prophets shall rise, and these false prophets shall deceive many in the end times. Now, like I told you before, the end times started with Jesus' death. And Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection started the end times and many false prophets have come since then. And I guess the, 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 I, the, um, the, the false prophets that the, the Revelations actually speaks of, the main false prophet, of course, we know is uh, the uh, Pope and Catholicism. And, and that whole thing, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. I actually have a whole video on that. It's Mother of All Gods, part seven of the Truth Behind Hip Hop, where you can understand Catholicism and its origins and, and how it plays into end time so you can have a better uh, understanding of it. Uh, it's, it's just hard to find information now because a lot of it has been deleted and removed from resources because the Catholic Church don't want you to know about the Inquisition, don't want you to know about the hundreds of millions of Christians that were killed because they would not accept the Pope as Christ or vicar of Christ. And all of these deaths all of the blood, all of the killings, all of these things, we know that is the woman that rides the beast in Revelations, who's drunk off the blood of the martyrs of the saints, those that were killed. All of those things have happened. Though That's the whole thing that Jesus was talking about with the false prophets shall rise and deceive many. And we know the papacy is still fully in control. And it's funny here in America, we don't hear much about it, but overseas, yeah, it's still happening. Uh, the Pope is still the man. He's still in control of almost everything. Matthew 24 and 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold in this day. Now, a uh, love that waxes cold is love that is not really love, or love that is gone or is dissipated. It's a person who just doesn't love or care anymore. And you know, when you are in a bad relationship and that person said, I just don't care anymore, then you know, that person is basically telling you that your feelings don't matter to them anymore or they don't really care about the relationship or anything. That's where we are now, and a lot of this has to do with Christ and the church. People don't care about the church. They don't care about Christianity. They don't care about Christ anymore. They've adopted all kinds of doctrines of, uh, you know, the Christianity being the white man's belief and the Bible being written by white people, all these things that they do when they have church hurt that is manifested inside of them because of their bad choices and decisions, you know, uh, a lot of times they just, their love just waxes cold and they don't have a love for the gospel or the gospel that saves, delivers, and set free. They don't have a love for that anymore. So it's telling us in the last days that love is even going to get worse, uh, wax even more cold than normal. It's going to be really, really bad in the last days, which are the days we are in now. People just don't love church anymore. And not only do people don't, you know, not love church, but they want to stop church now. And so we understand that uh, the Internet now and with them forcing us at home, forcing us, you know, forcing people to watch things online and different things like that. People are already some of them are just, you know, feeling like, hey, why even bother with the church? We just get the word from home. I can just sit in my drawers and watch it or whatever. I could just, you know, be just chilling and watch it. So, you know, what's the use? And it's causing, it's going to cause people to not care about their fellow man the way they should. Because when, you, when it comes to the Internet, you can't sense people's feelings. Uh, the Internet is cold. It's cold. People say things that, on the Internet that they wouldn't say in person because it's cold. 
And that's why a lot of the love of many have gone that way. And then finally, Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the Bible says the same shall be saved. Look at somebody and say, make it to the end. You have to make it unto the end. Because if you endure unto the end, you shall be saved. Can you see what is going on in our world today? Very important. Can you see? People are confused, anxious, and fearful right now because of COVID, because of coronavirus, because of stay-at-home orders, because of these things, the law coming, because our liberties, we're losing our liberties, people are dying, all these things. People are confused. And they're anxious and fearful, yet repentance and humility have not occurred. On a national scale, people are getting more and more arrogant with their godlessness. This is a prime example. This is Cuomo from uh, New York. And uh, here's a statement he made. The number is down because we brought the number down. God did not do that. Fate did not do that. Destiny did not do that. A lot of pain and suffering did that. So he is attributing what happened with the COVID uh, and the numbers are going down to us as man. And we know this is the era of man. We know this is the era of the number of man, which is six. And the Bible says this will be the mark of the beast or the number of his name, which would be 666. So we understand that now is man's grand stand to stand before God and declare that man is God. And this was a prime example, this statement that he made, hey, this is our thing. This is not a God thing. This is not a, even a faith thing. So with people being confused and anxious and fearful, it's funny how the leaders are still being godless and lawless. People are out of work, broke, and struggling to make ends meet, and yet they are still, <laughs> oh, I don't understand this, unforgiving, vengeful, and hateful. You would think that this pandemic that has caused all of these lost jobs and these people's financial futures being just, I mean, in the air, up in the air, we don't know what's going to happen. You would think people would be forgiven, but people are still holding on to hurt, pain, still vengeful, and still hateful. Breaking news for our viewers in the West. A stunning report just out. It shows a record-shattering 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week. That is double last week's record report. 6.6 .6 million people filing for unemployment. Our economy is taking a nosedive. People that built businesses for years, family-owned businesses, their businesses are closed. Some that I know, their businesses are closed, and they don't have the money to continue. And yet people are still carrying unforgiveness and being vengeful and being hateful. They can't see what time it really is. People are sick, dying, and many of the deaths, well, most of the deaths, are being attributed to COVID-19, yet they are not searching their own hearts for how they have behaved and treated their loved ones. <laughs> People are sick and dying. And I mean, this disease is killing, but people that are unhealthy, different things going on with their bodies and their immune systems, and I said this the other day on Instagram, you know, carrying the weight of hatred and malice and carrying the weight of unforgiveness and especially if you've talked bad to your father or talked bad to your mother. The Bible says, honor thy father and mother so that your days will be long upon the earth. You're not gonna get away with hating your father or hating your mother. These things are manifesting in diseases and sicknesses in the hearts of men and causing them to die and all it takes is the wrong flu or the COVID-19 or something to come and their bodies just can't, they can't muster up enough immune response to even survive it because of what they've been carrying. 
There are more than 1.7 million cases of COVID-19 around the world. The U.S. is reporting more than 20,000 deaths, surpassing Italy as the country with the most fatalities. Today alone, the U.S. recorded more than 1,700 deaths. And in each state, the local governments are struggling with making decisions about schools reopening and church services on this holy weekend. So no matter how you feel about how many deaths were COVID-related or what they're doing with the numbers or whatever, people are afraid of dying. You see them. You've talked to them. People are afraid of dying. There's a fear that's coming on people, especially people that are carrying these things. Y'all, God is trying to get our attention. You have to pay attention to how you've behaved, what you said to your mother, what you said to your father, how you are treating your brother and your fellow man. You have to pay attention because I'm telling you, this end time crisis is coming for you if you don't clean your heart up. And people are being pestered by ravenous locust swarms covering hundreds of miles, a plague of biblical proportions, and yet people are still carrying ungratefulness and discontentment in their heart. Now just imagine if this plague was to come to America over hundreds of miles locusts, swarms, and people still aren't paying attention. What must God do to get our attention? People are struggling to love their very own spouses and their families and love God's way. So, I mean, it's almost like no matter what happens, no matter what happens in our earth, people they just won't pay attention. And also people are confined to their homes and are forced to experience church online Yet they still visit websites full of lewdness and sexual perversion. Y'all, this is the chart that shows the spike in Pornhub's worldwide traffic since this pandemic started. Uh, that first uh, 0 0.1 is uh, the 24th of February. Come all the way over to the 17th of March, and you see the spike in the viewers. They've even offered free subscriptions to people in Italy. Pornhub knowing what it does psychologically to a person, knowing what it does psychologically to a relationship. And yet, because people are confined to their homes, they are watching and listening and just putting all of this wickedness in their heart and then wonder when they get down, wonder why when they get down to pray and talk to God, I just can't seem to connect with him. Oh, but you was connecting with the floozy on Pornhub. And see, that's the issue. We, we, we're trying to get something from God without giving something to God. We better read the signs. People are experiencing unprecedented circumstances and have no idea how it will rectify itself, yet their hope lies in stimulus checks, the government, vaccines, or whatever can reverse this pandemic instead of seeking and trusting in the true and living God. I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to warn you, this is the time where we need to put our trust in God. God is definitely, positively trying to get your attention. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3 and 3, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou found favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thy path. You know, people know that part. They know three and five. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. They know that because when they need some money or they, they, they lose their job, or, yeah, they know that part of the scripture. But let's back it up. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man it's very important then you trust in the lord with all your heart lean not unto thine own understanding in every one of thy ways all of thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path 
And finally, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and do what? Depart from evil. I just don't believe we have enough messages talking about evil and departing from evil and departing from sin. I just think we've gotten so comfortable with grace covering up everything. I mean, folks feel like they can go kill somebody now and God is going to cover them. Well, they killed folks in the Bible days. We have, to, we have to be wise in our eyes and depart from evil. If we want to see the blessings of God on our life, if we want God to do things for us, we have to do something for him. And that is dedicate our life to him by departing from evil. What we see in others is a reflection of what we see in ourselves. Just like the days of Noah, as he built the ark, people did not take him seriously. They kept enjoying themselves and going on with life as usual without even looking up to see the sky darkening. Now, you know, the sky gets dark for just a little rain. So you can imagine a 40-day and 40-night storm. Those clouds had to be gathering for a while. As soon as it started getting dark, I'd have hit my crusty knees. I mean, I would have dashed my knees on the stone. <laughs> what? But I'd have got down on my knees, and I would have been praying once I saw that darkness coming. But these people... <laughs> They didn't even look up to see the sky darkening. And this is why. The Lord showed me when your heart is darkened, the dark seems normal. You know, that's why so many people have such jacked up relationships. And every relationship they have fails. Because when it starts going good, they'll jack it up because they're so used to jacked upness. Folks can be so used to stuff being jacked up that when things go good, they create drama because drama is normal to them. That's why I tell parents, don't you be arguing and fighting and fussing in front of your kids all the time and throwing stuff and chunking computer monitors and, and <laughs> throwing chairs and junk in your house and then your kid grow up crazy. They think that's normal. So when a guy comes and tries to just talk to your daughter and just, how you doing? Uh, you know, you look nice. She just slapped him. Pow! <laughs> I'm just used to crazy. <laughs> they don't want anything normal. And so when you get used to that, when you get used to darkness, you don't see darkness. So when the sky was darkening, their hearts were already darkened. So when your heart is already darkened, the dark sky seems normal and light seems abnormal. They thought something was wrong with Noah. They thought Noah was crazy. They thought something was wrong with him because their hearts were so darkened. When your heart is vengeful and malicious, you see the end time signs as normal distresses because you dwell constantly in distress. So you're so used to distress that the end time distresses, hey, I work a different job every six months anyway. So when I lost my job, that's, that's just normal. Yeah, <laughs> people with stony, fallow hearts can only see what they are. That's why the Bible tells us, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, and then do what? Break up your fallow ground. Well, we need to bring back some of, them old, some of those old whining songs. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in thy way, in the multitude of thy mighty men. So it's time to break up the stony ground. Break up the fallow ground of your heart. For it is time. What time is it? It's time to seek the Lord. Right now, those that preach and teach true holiness, living right, and abstaining from sin are being ridiculed, fought against, and targeted. So those that are preaching and teaching true holiness in this hour, people don't want to hear that. No, don't tell me about that. You can't feed, you know, people have been living on, I mean, people have spiritual sugar diabetes. 
because they've been living on everything that is sweet about Jesus. All the sweetness, ain't he sweet? Sweet, sweet, sweet. Sweeter than a honey on a honeycomb, just sweet. Oh, sweet, sweet. I mean, your teeth just start hurting in service. Oh, man. But nobody want to talk about the judgment. Nobody want to. Look, Jesus can be sweet, and Jesus is. His word is as sweet as the honey in the honeycomb. Of course. But your life ain't going to be sweet if you ain't acting sweet. It doesn't matter how sweet Jesus is. If you sour and bitter like an old gobstopper, you're going to make folks' foreheads cave in <laughs> out of sourness. Because you're not sweet. Your behavior's not sweet. Your actions aren't sweet. You know, I mean, you need to, some folks need to just have some self-awareness where they take inventory. That's why I hate that this spirit of narcissism, and I'm going to talk about it more on another day, but this spirit of narcissism, it really bugs me. Narcissism is when you think yourself to be something and you're nothing. And you're the only one that think it. And you don't need nobody to think it with you. You just think it and you're good with that. Y'all, that's crazy. That person needs to be on medication. Like, if you were to take inventory, you would see nobody likes you. Like, nobody. But you don't care as long as you think you're something. That's, y'all, that's the devil. <laughs> that's narcissism. And that is crazy to think that way. But right now, those that preach and teach holiness, living right, abstaining from sin, are being ridiculed, fought against, and targeted. Those that are sounding the alarm and trying to get people to turn from their wicked ways are being attacked by spiritual cynics full of church hurt and daddy issues. And the Bible tells us that this, that would be what would happen in the end times with those that are carrying offenses. But those that are promoting everything is fine, just enjoy yourself, are not targeted at all. These are the ones that everybody wants to hear from. The Bible says in the last days, they would heap up on themselves teachers having itchy ears. I'm going to select men that don't conflict with what I want to do and how I choose to feel. They are not targeted at all. These are truly, how many of you believe it's the last days? These are the last days. And I try to tell people all the time, okay, you may be hurt by the church. You may be mad, hurt by somebody in the church. You know, I mean, the organist may not have played your song. They may not have let you finish your solo. Whatever happened that caused your, your church hurt, whatever the case, that don't change what the Bible says. The Bible still says holiness without no man shall see him. John 16 and 1. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. And I have this picture of these nails up here because at Maryville Baptist Church, they were getting ready to hold a service for, uh, I guess it was Easter weekend or Resurrection weekend or whatever you want to call it. And they pulled up into the parking lot, and people had poured nails all over the parking lot to set their tires on flat over this COVID. Even though they had permission to do it, they, they, they still, no, we don't want you to do it. They put out nails to stop the church from having service. Just like John 16 and 2, they're going to put you out of the synagogues, and they're going to believe they're doing God a service. They're going to believe that, oh, yeah, 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 no, we need to help y'all because, see, y'all have faith in God, but you, you got to have some balance with that faith. Really, if they have the faith level to gather and believe nobody's going to get sick, who are we to question that? Because once you start questioning people's faith level, then we start questioning people's faith. Once we question their faith, we start questioning their salvation and even their ability to repent. Then we start questioning whether or not they will even make it into heaven. Then we become the great whore of Babylon, Catholicism, with the Inquisition, where we can actually kill people because they don't believe what we believe. I know I'm preaching. Summary! It didn't take me long. The sign of the times should get your attention. 
A hardened heart cannot sense what time it really is. When you have fallow ground, you cannot tell that the end is near because you want to do the things that you desire. You do not want to believe that the end is near because you are busy doing what you feel defines you. Listen to this. This is why it's so important to operate in God's creation roles for your life. What are creation roles? Is what he created, the role he created you to fulfill. This is why it's so important. When you operate in the manner that God created you to function in, you do not put your value on career, ambitions, or achievements. Your value is in the role that God defined for you. People, our society lied to us. Look at somebody and say, somebody lied to us. Our society lied to us. They lied to our men and caused them to be emasculated in order to spoil their goods. They lied to our women, and they are now leading their households, leading their men, and in most cases suffering physical and mental health issues because of it. Our society lied to our churches and caused them to seek after money and fame instead of truly teaching sound doctrine and preparing people for this time. People were totally unprepared for this time. I know because of the emails and all the correspondence I get, people were not prepared. Society lied to our children and programmed them to be tolerant and accepting to all beliefs and behaviors of people. Now, disease and unhealthy lifestyles are causing our older influencers to pass away and the torch to be passed to the millennials that will welcome the one world religion, which is coexist, and the one world government, which is the new world order. They will welcome the theological heresy of the false prophet, who is the Pope, and the doctrine of the city on seven hills, which is the Vatican and the false god religion of Catholicism to once again resurrect Mystery Babylon the Great, which is Rome, as the world's antichrist breeding ground. The signs of the end times are here. Revelations 18 and 1 says, and this is this, I rejoice for this. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, God, because we know that your return is drawing near. We know that the end time clock is ticking. And though they may show us peace and safety and say things are going to go back to normal really soon, we know that sudden destruction is right around the corner. And Father, we want to be prepared for it. We want to be strengthened strong enough to stand in this hour. God, we want to be able to stand against the false prophet, the beast, the false system, the false religion of coexist. Father God, we want to be able to stand against the Vatican and all of the blood of the martyrs that, they're, that they are drunk with, God. We want to be able to stand as protesters of their belief system, just like the Protestants of old. Father God, we want the deaths of those martyrs to count for something as we stand in this hour. God, we will not mix and mingle with false gods and false idols. 
Help us, Father God, in this hour to stand strong. Help us to wade through the confusion. Most importantly, Lord, help our hearts. Because if we're carrying offenses and if we're carrying unforgiveness and if we're carrying things from the devil, we will behave like the devil. So free our hearts. Free our minds. Cleanse us. Fill us with your Holy Ghost. And help us, God, to keep a posture of repentance and sorrowfulness to you as we stand for you in this last hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.